what do you think, Tampa? Did you get to see any of it yet? No, I was late yesterday. Did you imagine we were on the same flight? I'm not no. sure. No. Um, but so far, so good. Like, people are very welcoming. I love it. A little bit more muggy than you're used to, huh? Yeah, it's nice and humid, though. <laughs> So what we're going to do, since there's so many of you, which is awesome, we do have three microphones. Crowd. I know, we have, a, we have a canine, he's going to ask you a question too, which I think is great. Oh, cool, what's his name? <laughs> what is the name? Ridian. Ridian. Very cool. So we've got three microphones, and we want to get as many questions as we can from the fans. We won't be able to get them all, obviously, but what I want you to do is, when you get to the mic stand, Everyone behind the person who's standing, please sit so everybody can still see the stage. Please and thank you. Um, also, I'll let you know when we have like one question left. But for now, we're going to talk a few minutes and then we'll bring you guys to the mics. Cool? You can start lining up now if you want to. That's, that's totally cool. So let's talk a little bit about Daredevil, shall we? I'm really excited to know what you think about the production of this with Netflix. Do you feel like there's a little bit more freedom? in what you do. I mean, you know, this isn't like network television, so. I feel like we can, you know, we could be a little bit more open about what we do on Netflix. Yeah, I mean, I, mean, I guess it's, a, it's an experiment that we're still figuring out, and they are still figuring out. Um, the thing that I noticed that I think probably you guys would have noticed, and not just with the Marvel shows, but with all TV shows that are on Netflix, one of the great things about the way that it's formatted in so far as you, you know, you watch you binge watch these episodes one after the other. Um, it, it means that you, you know, as a writer, as a, as, a, as, a, as creators of the show, you, you, have, you don't have to spend so much time at the beginning and end of each episode kind of reminding people what happened in the week before and like setting up a cliffhanger at the end of an episode to keep come, people coming back. So you get to spend, you get to kind of be subtler with your journeys and tell these stories in a more kind of authentic way, I think. And, and as an actor, I really appreciate that because, you know, the, the, the thing we hate to do the most is exposition, where you have to explain to people, you know, what happened or what is about to happen because they might forget or they might have forgotten. So, um... That's a really good point. I haven't really put much thought into that. Is the continuity a little bit different on the Netflix side than it is on the network side? So that's, that's really neat. So we are binge-watching now, you know? Yeah. Like, who has time to watch TV on TV? Yeah. <laughs> But, right. but, but, the, but the, the, the downside is, of course, that you, um, whereas we, when you watch a, a show episodically over 12 weeks or 13 weeks, you've only got a few months left to wait until the next season comes out. Right. But, but with this show, you've got 365 days minus 13 hours. Yeah. <laughs> That's Do you feel like there's a need for more publicity um, post that, you know, that kind of series on Netflix? Like, when it ends, do you feel like you need to keep people going on the, on the publicity side while they're waiting that year for the next one to come out? Or you just... Yeah. I, I think, you know, the um, quality of the, their shows um, speak for, them, for themselves. Yeah. And I guess, you know, um, what, the reason why I've been watching Daredevil season one before I was, you know, uh, in, into season two, or well, before I was working for season two, is because it was a really good show, and it's just uh, friends of mine who were encouraging me to, to watch it, so I don't think it has to do with uh, a lot of publicity. I think, you know... The, the it is a great show. That's why we're all here. <laughs> Have you been reading the comics before? Before? No, I have to be honest. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, I wasn't. But of course, when I was, um, you know, when I got the parts and, and maybe just a little bit before, yeah, I, I bought the comics and, and read them. What do you think about the realization from the comic to the film side of it? Like, how do you, do you think the realization is authentic? Do you think it's really bringing that message through? I mean, it's kind of a, a street comic, which is really cool, you know? Yeah, but I mean, also, if you go back to 1964, you know, from then to now, there's been so many different versions of this, of this wonderful character, you know? There's been, the, the, he's written and he's illustrated in so many different ways. Um, and so I think if, when I, when I first started reading the scripts and was, was manically reading, you know, um, going back in time and reading the comics right from the start, the thing that became evident to me really quickly was that there's no way we can make a show, we, there's no way we can present a Matt Murdock that is true to all of these renditions of him. 
you know, we ha I had to kind of read the scripts and figure out who is, the, who is this Matt Murdock, who is the Matt Murdock in the show that they're writing, and which kind of, which writers or illustrators kind of best represented this one, and of course I found that with the Ben This Believe stuff was a really, really, tonally was a really, really good example of the show that we were trying to make, obviously Frank Miller, Frank Miller's Man Without Fear, and and also Frank Miller's Born Again was one of my favourites to, you know, to, to read, and so, so, it, it, it's constantly been fun for me to go back, read the comics, read different different um, series, and and figure out who, which ones, you know, are, are valid in terms of what we're trying to do on this show. Um, but you know, the other thing is you can't, you have to, if you're going to make a television show, you've got. You, I was I was kind of gutted when they killed Ben Urich. Um you know. Uh, and what? sorry if anyone hasn't finished the first season. <laughs> But um, I, you know, I spoke to my boss about it. And I asked him. I was like, "What was the thinking behind that? Because that's a big call, man. And you know, he's such a pivotal character throughout the throughout you know all of the years that the, 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 they've been writing this comic." And he said, "You know, the thing is, if you if you're gonna if you're gonna make a show for the real fans, you will, you have to do something that's gonna make them feel uns uneasy. You have to do something that's gonna that's gonna make that, that's gonna tell them that no one is safe. Anything is possible. Otherwise, it's not really drama, is it?" You know, otherwise you watch the show and you think, well, you know, Foggy's not going to die because blah blah blah. You know, who knows? Maybe he will. You know. <laughs> but, <laughs> I can I can speak that way because I know less than you guys do. <laughs> do you have? Uh, are you excited about you know implementing a crossover with Luke Cage at all? I mean, that's kind of exciting. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I, 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 like you guys, I saw the trailer recently for that, and uh, I just think that's going to be so cool, and I can't wait. I can't wait, and then, you know, they're making Iron Fist right now, like, that's going to be bad. Um, and particularly, I'm really interested to find out what the relationship between, particularly between Matt Murdock and Danny Rand is going to be like, because that, that's a really cool dynamic, you know? Um, so, yeah, I can't wait, I can't wait to, 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 to see how that all pans out. I think out. we all can't wait. Yeah. We're just super stoked. Yeah. Okay, I would love to talk to you all day. It would be awesome, but I've got tons of fans here, so let's get to it. I'm gonna go one, two, three, and start back over here. So one question, please, so we can get as many people as possible. This young man over here, Not how are you? Yeah. Hi. Is it working? Hello. Hello. <laughs> I'm 18. <laughs> Anyways, hi. Uh, I was wondering, what are the possibilities of a crossover between Daredevil and Spider-Man? <laughs> uh, sadly, I have no idea. I have no idea what that. I, I'm, you know, it would be great, and I love it when those two, you know, cross over in the comics. You know, I love the relationship that they have. Um, uh, there's a some of you guys will know. There's a great. There's a there's a really wonderful issue where I think uh, Matt Murdock is in trial and. And, uh, and Peter Parker puts on his on, on his suit to, to convince the jury that he's not the same person as Daredevil. Um, uh, but uh, I have no idea if that if that's a possibility. Thank Thanks you. for asking them. Hi, hi there. Um, I am wondering what your Hogwarts houses are. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I, don't, I wouldn't even know how, where to begin. I mean, doesn't the hat have to choose? Hi. I had a question about uh, the uh, early season of, uh, the early part of season one, when you had that one take fight scene in the hallway. Oh. I just wanted to know. Yeah, I mean, we all love it here. I just wanted to know what was that, that what was that like filming? Yeah, great question. So, so we shot the first two episodes of season one at the same time because everything else we shoot we shoot in order. We shot one and two of both seasons um, at the same time, and so we've probably been filming for a couple of weeks. 
it, it was, it's manic when you start a television show, you know, I'd only had the job for six weeks and I was manically training and trying to, you know, get to grips with this character and, you know, thinking about a lot of things and, and training, I'd never done any martial arts training before. I have an amazing stunt double, Chris Brewster, who is an absolute genius, yeah. But give it up for Chris Brewster. And of course, the, the, the scene that you're referring to takes place in one shot, in one take. So we rehearsed it all morning. We came in, we rehearsed it all morning. And by rehearsed, I, I don't just mean the, the, the action was rehearsed. It's more, it was more the camera movements um, and what the other guys were doing in the rooms. You know, there's so, there's so many things in play for that, for that scene to work. And we did the first take, and we didn't, we didn't, I think we didn't even get into the first bit of the fight. And then we did the second take. And the second take, we got all the way through the whole scene, and it was kind of good. <laughs> and everyone was like, huh. So we went to lunch, <laughs> and then we, like, we all gathered around and we all watched it, and everyone was like, you know, it's pretty damn good. There's a couple of, there's a couple of moments that weren't perfect, but, but we could, you know, they, they've, they're good enough. So there was this like, well, should we go home? <laughs> And then, uh, and then, you know, Phil Silvera, who's a stunt coordinator, again, a genius, um, he, uh, he kind of said, we can do better. We can do better. So why don't, we, why, don't we, why don't we try and do a bit better? So we gave another go, and then we couldn't get through it. We did take after take, and we didn't finish them, or we did finish them, but they weren't nearly as good. But now we've committed to doing it better. You know? <laughs> so now it's midnight. We've been there all day. Chris Brewster and I are dis like absolutely, and as well as all the other stunt guys, are completely destroyed. And eventually, we kind of like, kind of were like, maybe we should just go with that early take. And we said, well, we'll do one more. I think it's just take twelve. And we did one more, and that's the take, that, the final take, which was just, you know, and we did all those things we wanted to do. to know what's been your experience of playing a blind man who can see, sort of. <laughs> um, it's, the truth is, it's tough. It's, it's, a, it's really tough. It's tough for many reasons, and, and many reasons that I didn't anticipate. It's tough because I, it, it, what I do with my eyes depends on where the camera is, so I have to adapt the performance a little bit for each. For, for where the camera is, because if the camera is very close to the actor that I'm working with, we call this an over-shoulder shot, then where my eyes focus doesn't actually read on camera as, as, being, as being blind, so I have to kind of adapt a little bit. It's also the top, one of the hardest things as well is to, when I have a business, like in, in Matt's apartment where I'm like doing the suit train, when I, when I um, patched up Elodie's shoulder, you know, I can't look at any of the stuff I'm doing, you know? It's really annoying. You know, if, if I have to pick something up, you know, if it's over here and I can't see it, Matt Murdock would just pick it up, right? But we have to do a ton of takes because Charlie's like... <laughs> so it's, 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 it gets frustrating. It's annoying. But, it's, um, but I really enjoy it. It's a great challenge. Yeah. Who's, um, who's got a question for Elodie? Do you find yourself doing it at home just to like perfect it? Yeah, I, I practice a lot. Yeah, I burnt myself making tea a few times. <laughs> I'm making tea blindly today. <laughs> Hi. Hi. Now that Shield has moved to the 10 p.m. slot, would you like it to be time for Shield to discover what's going on in Hell's Kitchen? Yeah. What's up, what's up? Shield, the ABC show is oh, getting no, I know moved. Shield, yeah. Yeah, they're getting moved to a later time slot, so they're allowed to do a lot darker stories. Oh, like is that true? Yeah. Oh, cool. Good to know. <laughs> I've always question. Would you like for your show to finally cross over with them? I, do you know what? I, look, I, again, it's very dangerous for me to talk about it because I have no idea of the possibilities or, or whether that's, you know, even on the cards. But any crossover, I think, is fun and cool. Whenever they do that, whenever, you know, I love the fact that Rosario Dawson's character, Claire Temple, is going through all of these shows. She's a, She's amazing, and, I, and there's some, you know, that we, did, we did a scene in season two, and I hadn't seen Rosario because I hadn't worked with her that season for a while. Um, it was I can't remember what episode, but I, I came to the hospital and we had a conversation, and I said, and she had a um, a big cut in her eye, makeup, but a cut, and I was like, why why do you have that? And she said, oh, because in the timeline I've just done I've just finished doing this thing on Luke Cage, so yes. that's gonna like they have to think about her makeup. 
because it's all date, it's all, it's all good. It follows a particular date, a timeline. So that you know, I see her in one episode in Daredevil season two, but she, meanwhile, she's done something with Luke Cage in that show, and that, I think that's brilliant. I, I love that stuff. Thank you. What would be like your best mashup ever? Like anybody goes. I'm going to let Ellie answer this question. <laughs> and I'm the specialist. Like <laughs> um, I don't know. <laughs> if we had like, if you were like, okay, these are my favorite characters, let's do a mashup. Mashups are so on, much on fun. On my show. It's like, just like, yeah, like as, yeah. Still you know, Charlie, you and yeah. <laughs> we, we can say, we can talk about Peter Griffin if you want to. We can bring anybody. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. Look, I, again, I, I know that this is probably not what I'm supposed to say, but and I, I, I preface it by saying I have no idea what the plans are, or where we go from here, or season three, or anything like that. But if we do continue to make Daredevil, at some point, I would love to see Bullseye show up. Um, if Daredevil had been invited, would he have um, been on Team Cap or Team Iron Man? <laughs> I hate this question. <laughs> I, get, I, 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 I got asked this question in passing. <laughs> I was walking in somewhere and someone said, Team Cap or Team Iron Man? And I kind of went, ah, oh, Team Cap. And now I feel like I've been, I'm home to her. So, <laughs> Team Cap, but only because I'm home. This is for Charlie. Um, with Daredevil being such a solitary character, how do you expect the dynamic to work out between uh, Luke Cage, Jessica Jones, and Iron Fist, who are traditionally more together? Sorry, can you just say that one more time? With Daredevil being more of a solo character and he works by himself, how do you expect the dynamic to work in the Defenders? Oh yeah, cool, I see, yeah. I, well, I think that, I think that I don't know. Again, I have no idea. But all of this stuff is talked about. All of this stuff, all of this stuff is kind of behind the scenes. Is, is, being, is being really considered. And I, I, I'm, I am, I'm just guessing. But I imagine the lesson that Daredevil had to learn in season two was that he can't do this alone. If you, if, as, as you know, when he's there on the roof holding Electra, having basically failed. I think he's he's finally got he's finally coming to terms with the idea that that, that this is bigger than he is and that he needs help, which is a great transition into the Defenders, I think. I don't know if that's going to be, you know, maybe that will still be a, an emotional struggle for him, I'm not sure, um, but I think at some point he's going to have to, he's going to have to accept help, and, and, and I think he may discover that there's, there's, there's a lot of benefits to that. Um, good, good question, thanks. Um, I, I just really, really quickly want to say this. Um, I think when I was reading the, the, the scripts for season two, as they were coming in, I remember thinking, whoever's charged with playing the character of Electra has got a tough, tough job. Because that is a really hard character to play. There's so much going on, and she, and she has to be incredibly dangerous, and incredibly sexy, and incredibly likable, and, and also kind of like the baddie. It's a really, really tough job. And I, and I, and I hope you guys agree, I can't, to, I can't express how brilliantly I thought Elodie did with that. <laughs> so, having said that, who's got a question for Elodie? Seriously. Thank you, Charlie. Hi. 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 Um, well, this is for both of you. Um, what's the most from behind the scenes that you're allowed to talk about now um, that, you know, were like funny pranks or funny stories or something that inadvertently happened where you all just ruined the tape and burst out laughing. <laughs> we had like a stupid prank one day. Which one? <laughs> yeah, not a really memorable one. Well, Elodie did a bunch of, Elodie and I did a bunch of, what are they called? The dub smashes? In one take. We did it in one take. <laughs> <laughs> I think I posted so, oh, I'm spitting. <laughs> I think I posted on my Instagram or something. It is. Everyone's blowing up your Instagram right now. <laughs> 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 it's 
somehow increase my followers. <laughs> Uh, you know, it's, it's hard to think back now. There are so many, there are so many of those moments, and also now by season two, we're all good friends. You know, so we had, so we, uh, we. Um... Well, you don't remember when we? Like, there was one day. Okay, one day we had to shoot in this car, and the glasses were. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. So obviously, it was not really. That's why it's lame, and I should really not say that because no one's gonna. You're all gonna say like, ah, okay. <laughs> <laughs> but um, we just started to put some. Fake caoutchouc glass in, in our shoes. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay, so episode eight of season two, it, it begins with Electra after the fight by the hole, and Electra gets stabbed, and then we're in the car, the car chase with the, with the hand following us. So they have fake glass from, from, so that we're not sitting on real glass. Um, it's not going to work. And, uh, and no, no, but it was kind of it was kind of funny because we were like we were kept on like trying when we were waiting around sitting in this car we kept on like trying to get it in the other ones down the costume. It's really yeah. Hard. We do take our job seriously as well. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Hey, how are you? Hi. Hey. Hello. What's your favorite part about playing Daredevil? Um. You know, I think I, th <laughs> I th you know, I, I, one of the things that I, I, uh, one of the things that I was a bit concerned about when I started playing this character was that he's known as the man without fear. And uh, and if you're going to play a character on television over 13, 26 more now episodes, playing someone who is incapable of being afraid is not uh, I'm worried was not that interesting because it robs you of what I think is the greatest human attribute, which is courage. Um, and so what I kind of decided um, was that the reason Daredevil is known as the man without fear is because the public, they see what he does. They see that he, that he takes, you know, he goes out there and he tries to make a difference without, without superpowers per se. He goes out there and he, and he puts his life at risk and he tries to, to help his community and help the city, and he does that. Um, and, they, and as a result, the public see what he does and they say, he's the man without fear. They call him that. But in truth, I think Matt Murdock feels great fear. I think he's as, as, as afraid as the rest of us are about things. And the difference being with him is that he feels that fear and he decides he's gonna punch through it, he's gonna do something about it, despite being afraid. And that, I think, is my favorite thing about people. You know, the, the people I admire the most in life are the ones that, that no matter how afraid they are, they, they show up for life every day. And being afraid can be anything. It could be afraid to leave your house, you know? Yeah, for having a form of agoraphobia where you don't like being in big crowds, which would not work today. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Like anything, just, just talking, to, talking to strangers, whatever it is, helping someone in the street, whatever it is, like, that, that causes you fear, if you have the, the courage and the guts to do, to do that, it, it, it's, a, it's a wonderful attribute. And I think that's probably my favorite thing about Matt. Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah. There's, there are times when there are times when Matt learns something about someone, but it, it it's not through looking at them. Is any? I'm thinking. There's another example. Yeah, I think it's in. The episode where you slice the guy's throat. <laughs> yeah, like which episode is, is that not in? Um, there's, I, I, you know, in Matt's apartment, Matt fights uh, the young ninja. Or the, the teenage ninja, we call him the Tinger. So, he... We had to tell the story that, you know, M Matt finally gets him down. And we have to tell the story that he knows, that he kind of is shocked that he's only a young boy, that he's, you know, which 
which takes him, a, kind of upsets him, takes him aback a minute, and as he's kind of reeling from that information, Electra comes in and slices the guy's throat. And she's not upset about it. She doesn't get it. <laughs> so, it's hard because we have to let the audience know that he's a, a kid, so I have to take his mask off. But Matt Murdock would never need to take his mask off to know that, so we have to find a reason. So he takes his mask off, we, we tell the story that he takes his mask off, so that I can intimidate him. He, he doesn't know I'm blind. So I can, so Matt can be, I, I know, I've seen your face, I know you, right? So that's why he takes the mask off. But then he has the realization after that, in the storyline, then he has the realization that he's a kid. But it's gonna feel like he knows this now because he, took his, because he took his mask off, when in actual fact he knows because he's finally listening to the guy's heartbeat. And he can tell the age of a, of a human by the way that their heart beats. That's, it, that's a very complicated series of things to try and put on camera without it being confusing. So that's, that's one of the things you know, that, that, I, fi uh, that I, I find that I don't know what to do up here <laughs> in those moments. Yeah, I hope that explains it. Thank you. Hi. Hi, I have a question for both of you. Um, although Daredevil may be known for its great action, I was wondering as actors, was there ever a moment where you got your sides and you were like, this is such a great acting moment for me to like expand this character, like emotionally, what was your favorite part? Oh, yeah, I think this show is full of it. And that's what, you know, I think we all enjoy, like all, yeah. all of us. Um, because yes, it's, it's an action-packed series and we did every Friday, you know, we, we did fights, we, we had to go through the, the action sequences, but I think most of it is the relationship between the characters and, um, and, and every character has such um, richness and, um, you know, I think as actors, that that's what we really enjoyed, and in particular, I don't know, I mean, there were so many. I, um, I really enjoyed, um, actually, the, which was b between action and, and um, playfulness and acting was the scene in the ring. Yeah. Because I think, between us, this is also where we clicked as actors. Like, he slapped me on the, on the butt. And I said, all oh, you want. Um, but, you know, it was just very playful. And, and then we were like, okay, this is it. This is this chemistry we need on screen and between the characters. So there was that. And, um, and I enjoyed dying in Charlie's arms. <laughs> um, yeah, so many of you. Yeah, the writing on this show, I think, is just spectacular. You know, it really, really is. And, I, and you know, I love a show where you can, we can, you know, the beginning of episode six of season two, you know, we can have a, a, an awesome fight scene in a New York loft and then have a seven minute dialogue scene in a diner, you know, and both, and both of them feel like a fight scene because there's so much, you know, of this between these two characters. I thought they wrote this, this particularly this, this relationship fantastically well. Um, because it, it's so, it's, 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 well, it, yeah, I mean, there's so much, there's so, you, you, I, I don't know, I, I guess I'm not, I'm not really an audience member, so it's hard for me to know, but I feel, I felt reading it and performing it torn for Matt between, Seriously? between Karen and, and Electra, and you see what both of those people have to offer Matt, you know, and in a weird way, both of them are perfect for him, but need, but but that's only because he's in a sense he's two different people. So um, I, I mean, just from from an actor's point of view, what a wonderful dynamic to get to play with, you know. Um, I think we've got one more question. Time for one more question. Punish him. Yeah. I was actually specifically wondering what it was like working with John Berthold for both of you, and what the Punisher did for your own personal morals. How did his <laughs> How did his presence in the show affect how you personally feel? Do you actually side with him, or do you still feel like Daredevil's the right way? <laughs> I didn't, but um, I enjoyed uh, spending time with John. You know. And what he did for my morals, I'm not going to tell you. <laughs> but uh, he's, a, he's a lovely man and an incredible actor. And I wish that I could have, you know, would have more, I would have done anything with yeah. him. 
So, that's it, Mr. Chuck. Yeah, give it up, John Burnthal, but I just like it. Evidently, he was meant to be here, and I was, as we were walking Seriously. back through here, there was they were, they'd obviously had to take take oh, down a sign that said that said John Burn that said John Burnthal with a picture of him. So I texted it to him saying, "Where are you, dude?" <laughs> um, I think I think the question you ask is really is not for me to, to to answer because I think it really is up to to the audiences to make that decision. But again, the writing, they, they you know they they they. They presented a really good argument, a really good problem, and um, and I, it's impossible for me playing Matt for me as Daredevil to ever to ever completely um, side with with the Frank's way of thinking. But he he makes a good point, you know. In this season of the show, Daredevil's way wasn't really working. You know, it wasn't really cutting the mustard, as they say. Um, but uh, I, we had a great, like, I can't say enough good things about John. I think he's a, an amazing actor. He's a world-class actor. He's one of the great actors of our generation. And um, I can't wait to see what, uh, I can't wait to see the, the Punisher show. It's going to be Tomorrow, all of you, every single one of you. Guys, thanks so much for coming. It's nice to meet you.